In the past 16 months, we've traveled back and forth to the neon of Las Vegas, the bright lights of the world's most vibrant city, New York. And we've even hopped the Atlantic and ventured to London, England. It's been an eight-fight journey into the madcap world of professional boxing. The best-selling heavyweight unification series on HBO. We've seen the drama and disappointment of fallen champions. The former IBF and WBC heavyweight champion, Larry Reed, the Eastern Assassin, Paul Pinkley. varied controversial issues which have plagued this quest for one champion and i can say to the judges the referees the promoters the kids where the sun don't shine and since we're on hbo that's my big black behind angry and bitter fighters making accusations of promoters and at times even pulling out others taking a different road to greener pastures as lawsuits are flying and championship belts are stripped the disappointment and disgrace of challengers turned club fighters. Stefan Pankerstar, King Bone Crusher Smith. We also witnessed the emergence of a rising star. Tonight, we'll focus on Mike Tyson's trainer, Kevin Rooney, whose influence on the young champion is traced back to his own days as a fighter. Now, Tyson takes the final step toward the undisputed title. And now Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts and a left hand. Thomas trying to hold on. Serious trouble, and down he goes. And finally, we've seen the opportunists. Tony Tucker, after a come from behind TKO of Buster Douglas, has emerged as the IBF heavyweight champion. There was left hook there. And a right behind him. Is in deep trouble on the ropes. Almost halfway through the round. Stop the fight. And Mills Lane, I believe, has stopped this one. He has. It's over. Tonight, we take an in depth look at his controversial business relationship with his father, Bob Tucker. As we present the final chapter of HBO Sports Heavyweight Unification Series. Tonight in Las Vegas, Tyson and Tucker meet for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. for the Las Vegas Hilton in Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports presents the final fight of our heavyweight unification series as WBC and WBA champion Mike Tyson beats IBF champion Tony Tucker. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. On March 22nd of 1986, Pinklin Thomas lost his WBC title to Trevor Burbick in this very arena, the first fight in a heavyweight unification series, which finally reaches a conclusion tonight. Champions have come and gone. Michael Spink still claims a piece of the crown as the choice of at least some, but tonight, one man will climb out of this 20-foot square with the undisputed title for the first time since February 15th, 1978. Ironically, it was in this very ring and in this this very arena that the enigmatic Leon Spinks took the undisputed title from the legendary Muhammad Ali. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Sugar Ray Leonard and Larry Merchant. Welcome to Las Vegas. Yes, there will be a championship fight tonight, contrary to some discussions yesterday, discussions about the fact that there were an awful lot of hands in Tony Tucker's pocket, none of which were Tony's. And also, I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen Michael Spinks in this championship fight and not Tony Tucker. But Larry Merchant, the simple fact is, Michael Spinks is up in the ozone here, and Tony Tucker is here tonight in the ring. I don't think there's any question or that it's any secret that we'd have preferred to have Michael Spinks fighting Tyson in the final showdown. 
But given the politics and the egos and the conflicts of interest in boxing, and the fact that some fighters try to circumvent the tournament and others try to sabotage the tournament, it's simply amazing that we would have any final at all. At all. And it's even odd, in a way, that Michael Spinks, of all people, really validated Tucker as an opponent for tonight, because Spinks not only refused to fight Tyson in the tournament, but he also gave up his share of the heavyweight championship so that he didn't have to defend against Tucker, who was a mandatory challenger. Who is this unknown terror? Well, he's unbeaten against ordinary opposition. He's never been knocked down against the same opposition. And he is a big, tall, defensive-oriented fighter, the kind of fighter that has frustrated Tyson in the past. And one other thing, Barry, he has a 14-inch advantage in his hair length. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar, let's talk for just a moment about Mike Tyson. He's a guy, and everyone has said this, including yourself, the only person who's going to beat Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. And yet a couple of things that went a little bit astray for the champion in the past couple of weeks. He missed three or four days of training. That's never happened before. And when he weighed in yesterday, he was three or four pounds heavier than he has been, at least in recent fights. Is it just a mountain out of a molehill? Is there anything to it at all? Well, I think for Mike Tyson, what appears to be uncharacteristic is really normal because when I was training for Hagler, I trained for so long, Barry, I had a break training. I had a break monotony. I think the same thing applies to Mike Tyson. He wanted to get away from that training atmosphere and go to a more peaceful like atmosphere. Uh, it's okay. I don't see no big problem with that. All right, and of course, when something like that does happen, when a Mike Tyson does go away, well, then I guess all the fingers start pointing, and in this case, the most logical place for them to point is into his own corner, and the second man in his corner, his trainer, Kevin Rooney. Now, of course, if Kevin Rooney is going to be held accountable at all for some of the lapses in Mike Tyson's training, then I guess it's fair to say that he can also be held accountable for Mike Tyson's record. Everybody try to relax and do the right thing now. Try to move your head. Like, do the best you ever did, you know what I'm saying? You guys understand what I'm saying? Don't make me go off, you understand? That's work. That's work. That's work. At 31, Kevin Rooney has a stable of two toddlers and one 21-year-old heavyweight champion, all of which happened happily in the long run, but unhappily at that moment after Alexis Arguello ended his own championship ambitions. Rooney learned that giving advice can be more rewarding than receiving punches. Rooney's journey to his enviable position began as a teenager in upstate New York, where he sat at the feet of Zen boxing master, Cus D'Amato. It was like a power battle. And then the more I got to know him, the more he spoke to me. Like when I first came up, we used to take long rides to the city and he would talk over and over the stories and, you know, life in general. You know, I feel that everything that I know and, and that I teach is what I learned from Cut. Rooney was D'Amato's keenest disciple when Tyson arrived at age 14 from a correctional institution. Gradually, a bond developed between the amateur and the pro, and D'Amato groomed Rooney to carry on his legacy through the future champion, even though he had never trained anyone before. The torch was passed when D'Amato died a year and a half ago. We just both grew up around us. We're like uh, brothers. It's not business to me between me and him. I guess we're more friends than than just, you know, boxer trainer. But when it comes to business, when a job has to be done, you know, we both do our job. He's only looking for one shot on you. Gotta, you keep that tight. You gotta be even more aware now, you understand? You can't get lazy, you can't get careless. Michael, you have a great jab. You're not using it at all. I wanna see a snappy hard jab. You're not fighting this guy. You're gonna, you're gonna fight, you're gonna fight him, you're gonna bullshit. But given the high expectations of the precocious Tyson, Whenever he looks less than his best, whether it's his fault or not, rumors surface. Rumors that a veteran, perhaps like Eddie Futch, will join or replace Rooney. I'm able to handle it. I know what I'm doing. See, now I've said this before. I've said it to newspaper men. I, you know, I know how to read, and I see, you know, you know, this guy bring this guy in. Rooney's not doing it. This and that. I just take that stuff with a grain of salt. See, I, I've always said. I don't, I'm not, I don't consider that I'm better than anybody, but I don't consider anyone is better than me. Now, how can I say that? I say that because I, I got an education. I was around Custom Model, who was head and shoulders above everybody. There wasn't a greater trainer, teacher, or manager than Cust. 
Inevitably, despite the dynamic Tyson's perfect record, Rooney has been and will continue to be targeted for his imperfections. Rooney balances the ballyhoo with the belly aching by working with prison inmates. That, of course, is not unlike Customato and the young, far from perfect Mike Tyson. All dealt hands in life. Now, these guys, you know, their environment or whatever, or they, or they were just, you know, not too bright at the time they committed their, their, their crimes or whatever. So, well, I, I seen that side of life. So, and then I met a guy like Cus. So, well, now let me, you know, let me try to help. See, I don't need the job, but for the reason I told you before, it's a way for me to refine my skill. Whatever the pressure of his job, the responsibility that goes with the opportunity, life is a knockout for Kevin Rooney right now, as it is for Mike Tyson and everyone around him. I think we got a little bit of a dynasty going, and if we want to roll, I feel like give him good advice. Now, if the fighter goes out there and does it, that's good. If the fighter doesn't do it, that's bad. And if he doesn't do it, then, they, then they're going to look at me. So, so far, they haven't had that opportunity. But you can see the handwriting is on the wall. If something is to go wrong, it's all going to come on Kevin Rooney. But that's the business. So, you know, it's no big deal. I'm not going to lose any more hair over it. <laughs> well, in just a few minutes, Kevin Rooney will bring his and Customato's charge into the ring to try to win it all in the heavyweight division as the WBC and WBA champion Mike Tyson takes on the IBF heavyweight champion Tony Tucker. Two undefeated fighters fighting for an undisputed title, only the second time in boxing history. You know, because of the celebrity status of our boxing champions, they're always being approached. Give me this, donate that. Can we have one of those for charity? It isn't often that a champion does the approaching. It was only a year ago when Holy Angels Church in Chicago burnt to the ground. Faced with a bill of more than $3 million to rebuild, Father George Clements needed help. And there was Mike Tyson. I have no doubt in my mind that with the help of the heavyweight champion of this planet, that church will go up, no doubt whatsoever. With more on Mike Tyson, here's Larry Merchant. <laughs> Sorry, we've had a little bit of a disturbance behind me here. I don't think that Mike Tyson is ready to be canonized just yet, at least outside the ring. Inside the ring, he is a candidate to be canonized in the, the boxing sense of the term, which brings me to a point that I'd like to make personally. Long before there was a Mike Tyson or an HBO, I believe that John L. Sullivan had it right when he said, I can lick any man in the house. A true champion, a real champion, fights anyone and everyone. And we've had such champions in the last decade. Duran, Leonard, Hagler, Hearns, Aguayo, Larry Holmes before he got old and started to pick some of his opponents. And indeed, Michael Spinks as a light heavyweight, not as a heavyweight. Mike Tyson is the only heavyweight out there who says, I can lick any man in the house and is willing to back it up. That's why we have so many folks here, so many more folks out there. And that's why Tony Tucker is getting a chance tonight. <laughs> After President Carter declared a boycott of the 1980 Olympics, the U.S. boxing team scheduled a series of exhibitions in Europe. En route to Poland, their plane crashed. There were no survivors. But the star of the team had missed the flight because of an injury sustained the day before. It, it really hit me, because I said, you know, I, I was that close, you know, to being, you know, being dead, along with the rest of the guys. So I, I figured that, God spared my life for a purpose, and, this, and that purpose was obviously to be a heavyweight champion of the world. Tony Tucker's career was guided by his father, Bob, a former amateur fighter himself. Although he would miss out on Olympic fame and instant fortune, he was well respected. He won gold medals at the World Cup and then at the Pan American Games, which turned out to be the highlight of his amateur career. His father would follow him into the pro ranks. Well, I really don't look at it uh, in the manner of father and son. Just look at his fighters and, uh, and uh, trainer and manager. I try to put father and son out of my mind. 
But if um, if something catches me, like his leg getting hurt, and I jump in the ring, so then the father comes up. Fathers and sons, however, are notorious in boxing for starting better than they finish. Heavyweight champion Joe Frazier, for example, couldn't reproduce himself in his son Marvis. Couldn't make him over in his own furious image. In mid-career, Bobby Chez's father committed suicide. Later, Chez won a light heavyweight title. Emotions and or economics usually get in the way of a son's development. I figured if I put all my interest into my son, it's, uh, I couldn't lose either way, whether he was successful or not, because I had put all my work and money into him. And it was better than me putting my money into a beer bottle or putting it into a particular lady. I uh, invested in that manner because I saw people spend a lot of money that way. I didn't see how I could lose. But the Tuckers had to sell off pieces of themselves, borrow money to get this far. Of the $1.9 million purse tonight, the fighter will get $600,000 before taxes. Promoter Cedric Kushner will get $350,000. As will promoters Jeff Levine and Josephine Abercrombie, who helped underwrite Kushner's investment in Tucker. Silent partners Dennis Rappaport and Alan Kornberg, a quarter of a million dollars between them. Bob Tucker's share comes to something less than that for all his trouble. And finally, Emmanuel Stewart, Tucker's first manager, gets $120,000. I made the move that was best for Tony, that I felt was best for his development. I knew ahead of time, and I told Tony to be patient, because I said, all those guys you see rush to the top, they're coming down just as fast. It proves me right, we, we got the championship. But I'll be completely right when he beats Tyson. A couple more fights and I can go sit down. My job will be done. I stood away from all that, the distractions, and kept on pushing and striving. And my dad was a very big help because he was right there behind me saying, you're going to get there, you're going to get there, just keep going, keep going. Get me to the gym, keep going, keep going. So through God and my father, is why I'm here today. Few father-son teams get this far to the big shot for the big time and the big bucks, even though their pie in the sky is sliced many, many ways. The downside is that his father may have impeded his development as an athlete by matching him exclusively with soft opposition, reducing his chance to win the big one against Mike Tyson. Because the idea is really not just to fight for it all, but to win it all. And you may have heard that the gluttonous Dennis Rappaport now wants a bigger piece of Tony Tucker's pie, $540,000. He tried and failed to stop this fight, as he has others. Apparently, that's his true calling in boxing. And so we are just about ready to go, get on with things here. We have a momentary delay in Mike Tyson's entrance, and incidentally, it is rather unique that Mike Tyson, who is a champion, will enter first. The reason for that, a coin toss, and Mike Tyson then will be the first man in the ring. Mike Tyson, of course, has been a heavyweight for 29 months as a professional, and people are saying he fights a lot. Well, he has. He's had 30 fights. But when you look at those numbers, not any more certainly than Jack Dempsey or George Foreman, even more of a contemporary, of course, of Mike Tyson's. Foreman fighting 32 times. Tyson fighting, of course, just about, in fact, a little over one fight a month during his professional career. But he has, of course, had 15 first-round knockouts. Here is the champion of the WBC and WBA, Mike Tyson. He is all business. He, of course, has won all 30 of his fights. Kevin Rooney, the man we spoke of a moment ago, leading him toward the ring. And Ray Leonard, there's been some conversation about the celebrity status, the newfound celebrity status, if you will, of Mike Tyson. And maybe it's hurting him. Maybe that's why he left training camp. There was that incident, of course, in the parking lot in Los Angeles. Now there's conversation he should have a bodyguard. He should have somebody deflecting the public away from him. What's your feeling about the whole celebrity of Mike Tyson? Well, Barry, once you reach a certain status, quite naturally you have physical or either verbal confrontations. I think with Mike Tyson, uh, he just started. And you need someone in there to deflect 
or alleviate the pressure or even the arbitrator, which I have. Of we, course, Tyson himself rejects the idea of a bodyguard. I mean, here's a guy who can beat anybody in the world, sort of like uh, somebody trying to foist a spokesman on Lee Iacocca. And Tyson's entrance into the ring literally being heralded. And there, of course, is the record that we spoke of, 27 knockouts in the 30 fights of Mike Tyson in a 29-month career. He, of course, has already become the youngest man to ever win the heavyweight championship. Sugar Ray Leonard, at this point, we always talk about what to look for, what are the good points, and yes, what are the bad points of the two combatants. Let's talk tonight about Sugar Ray's tip of the night. How do you see this one, first of all, Mike Tyson? Well, Barry, quite naturally, power and strength is no big secret with Mike Tyson. But what I'm impressed with is the hand speed of Mike Tyson. Seen here against Chuck Burbick, exceptionally quick hands for a heavyweight. Once again, we see him against Pinkman Thomas. Great hand speech, which enables him to put his combination together very well. He did a fantastic job here against Thomas. Now, something I'm advocate of is the left jab. Now, here we see Pinkman Thomas in the white trunks using that left jab to break the rhythm of Mike Tyson. It enables you to keep your man off balance. Tony Tucker here in the white trunks. His jab is kind of quick, but not consistent. Also, he drops his left jab. You notice that? and it's quite detrimental against a guy with a counter right hand like Mike Tyson. I also believe mobility, lateral movement, is very, very important. You can't be a stationary target. Here, Tony Tucker in the reds, stationary target, gets hit by a right hand, left hook goes down against Buck Buster Douglas. So that's what to look for, and if Tony Tucker isn't gonna be able to beat Mike Tyson, he may be able to blind him. If you look at that outfit, Tony Tucker has come into the ring. He sprinted into the ring. Well, whether he sprints out remains to be seen. He's won 34, not 35. There was that fight with Danny Sutton. Remember that he went down with an injured knee. It was ruled no contest and not, as some people have said, a victory. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, and there is one number that really jumps out at you. It's down at the bottom, and that is the 10 and a half inch, or rather 12 and a half inch reach advantage, 10 and a half inch, beg your pardon, reach advantage of Tony Tucker over Mike Tyson. And don't forget that 14 inch hair advantage. Hey. And here is our punch stat numbers to give you a profile of the quantitative uh, number of punches that they throw in, in fights. Tyson threw only 26 per round against Bone Crusher Smith because Smith was hugging him so much. They throw around the same number of punches. Tyson, of course, throws a lot harder punches, and that's shown in this uh, graphic on jabs. He throws a few jabs. Tucker throws more. He's going to have to throw a lot more in this fight. And we will take a look at the rules that it is an amalgam this time of the IBF, WBC, and WBA. I'd love to have been in those meetings. Must have been like the bar scene in Star Wars. Ten-point must system. Three judges score the fight. No standing eight count. You can be saved by the bell only in the last round. And, of course, the one that really could have an effect on this fight, the three knockdown rule, is in effect, contrary to many fights. Now, let's go up to the ring announcer. Chuck Hall will get the pre-fight introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hilton Center of the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel where tonight, John King Productions, in association with the, uh, the Hilton Hotel, presents Glory Hallelujah, a unification of the heavyweight championship of the world. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dwayne Ford Chairman, Harold Buck Executive Director, with commissioners at ringside, Sig Rogich, Herb Santos, Freddie Little, and Sammy Macias. The sanctioning bodies and the representatives of those bodies at ringside, representing the WBC, its president, Jose Suleiman, representing the WBA, its president, Gilberto Mendoza, and representing the IBF, its president, Bobby Lee. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next bout of the evening, the judges are Julio Roldan of Venezuela, Phil Newman of New Jersey, and Bill Graham of Las Vegas. The timekeeper is Al Bysik. Counting at the nightgowns, Mike Lachella. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Omansky, Donald Romeo, and Elias Ghanem. And your referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the unification of the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the blue corner, Fighting out of Houston, Texas, weighing 221 pounds, with a professional record of 34 wins, no defeats, 29 KOs, he is the IBF heavyweight champion of the world, Tony 
TNT Tucker. And in the red corner, from Catskills, New York, he too weighs 221 pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career. 30 wins, no defeats, with 27 KOs. He is the WBA and WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Okay, now, here we go, now. You've had your thrust in the dressing room to protect yourself at all times. In the equation, Mr. Tucker is chief second. In the equation, Mr. Tyson is chief second. Let's get it on, come on. There's a line in the movie Full Metal Jacket. You can talk the talk, can you walk the walk? It's time for Tony Tucker now to walk the walk. Or run the run, as it were. And we'll see what kind of tactic Tucker takes. I was expecting Mike Tyson to jump right on Tony Tucker. Tucker, I had figured that he should at least tie his man up, try to frustrate Mike Tyson. But is he strong enough to do that? Well, that was a good right hand by Tucker. That might have been the best shot that Mike Tyson has ever taken right there. Did you notice that uppercut blocked Mike Tyson? This man, Tucker, may have found out a weakness. He may have seen something. Technically speaking, no one gave Tucker a chance, but there are miracles here. The last time Tony Tucker lost a fight was in 1978. You know, a lot of times people say, well, what do you see in Mike Tyson? And we always felt that he was susceptible to take jabs, but I think what Tucker saw in, in Tyson was the uppercut. He was susceptible to the uppercut because of his style, the way he launches in. That was one of the few times I have ever seen Mike Tyson stopped by a punch. Come on, quick grab. Come on, here we go. What happened then was the best thing that Tucker could have done. Maybe got some respect for Mike Tyson. Step back, quick punch him, step back. Tucker said step when we back. talked to him, he said, I'm not worried about what he's going to do to me. I'm worried about what I'm going to do to him. That's confidence. Another right hand. Step back. Quick punch, quick grab. Tucker. Tucker seems willing to brawl with Mike Tyson early. Step back. Get him up, Tony. Come on. There was a left hand by Tyson. Also, Tucker said, Tony Tucker stated that because no one expected him to win, that was motivation. And he's fighting with sheer motivation here. A lot, a lot of confidence. Yeah, he said he likes being the underdog, even though it's the first time he's been one. Probably since he was an amateur. You know what's happening? Every time Mike reaches in, Tony comes with the right hand, a counter right hand. Hey, step back, quick, quick punch. Step back, here we go. The other thing you have to say about Tucker is that he has fought to step the back. level of his competition and just step a little back. bit better, enough to win. Against James Broad, frankly, I didn't think he fought that well, but it was against James Broad. Against Douglas, he fought a little bit better. And now we'll see what he can do against certainly the best fighter he's fought so far. Sit back, Mike. Sit back, Tony. Sit back, clean. We go clean. Here we go. Again, a right hand, but he took a right from Tyson. And another big right by Mike Tyson. Sit back, Sit back. Sit back, Sit back Mike. Sit back. Did a very good first round for both men, and particularly for Tucker. Great left hand at the bell by Tyson. Well, Tony Tucker is a 10 to 1 underdog. He wasn't 10 to 1 in that round. Head. Don't look for the one shot to the head. Go to the body. Body first. Now let's see the uppercut almost immediately after the bell. He follows a right with a left and rocks Tyson. The first time we've ever seen Tyson really rock back like that. And again, it looks like Tucker has been coached to look for the left hand. Now there's the right hand. 
that landed high on the head of Tucker and did no damage. And sitting way up in left field, uh, folks, is Michael Spink sitting in the last row of the balcony here at this place. We'll show you a picture of him later on. Mike, is Tyson is still trying to keep that pressure back. going. Hey, hey, time, time. Come on, grab this, Kevin Come Rooney on. told him, go to the body. Don't look for the one punch to the head. What I like about Tucker is the fact that back. he's throwing combinations. He's not throwing one, two. He's putting three, four punches together. And he's following up with left uppercut, left hooks. Led with the left uppercut that time. Just has to keep those hands high. That's very important. Because Mike is rocking left and right, left and right, and looking for an opening. Well, you know, Ray, I, I hearken back to your fight with Marvin Hagler, where after the first round, there was no question in my mind, at least, that your confidence just really surged, and you have to think the same thing about Tony Tucker. The first, surviving the first round actually can turn the tables around a fighter. It uh, gives him the confidence, and again, well, like him and Tony Tucker, there is the fact he's throwing one three. He's following up with the left hook. He's finishes his combinations with the left hook. He's using his height, his reach. Don't look for one shot. Come on, Mike. Step back. Step back. that Good body shot by Tyson. That's exactly what Kevin Rooney was telling him to do in the corner. Now, see, this is what uh, Tuck needs to do. Keep tying his man up. Every time he gets inside, you got to tie those arms up and not let Tyson work that body. Tyson's trying, Tyson is trying to slow Tucker down by body shots. He's working his body, trying to slow those legs down and bring those hands down. Oh, oh, oh. Time, time, that was a little time. bit low, and I think time. it's going to draw a warning. You go down there again, you're coming. Come on. Tyson, two good jabs. Interestingly enough, Kevin Rooney had told us that when he tells Tyson to jab, he's not jab telling him to jab to box. He's telling him to jab to get inside. What I want you to look for, also, when Tyson comes in, he puts both feet together, so it's easy to be knocked down. That was a good example. That uppercut is going to do the job over and over again. Almost hooked him with the left hand before bringing the uppercut underneath. He did hold him. That is a look of confidence in the face of Tony Tucker. He's tying his man up once again. Very smart thing to do. He really wants to frustrate Mike Tyson. There was a left hand by Tyson, but it did not appear to hurt Tucker. Well, Tucker wasn't given much chance, but of the five billion people on the planet, he's the only one who has a chance to beat Mike Tyson tonight. And right now, he's taking advantage of it. Come on. If you want to come in, come on. See, if you're doing that. Keep your balance. When you punch him, walk him. Turn him sideways and walk him. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. And there's Michael Spinks, way up in the last row of the bleachers here. He went up there as a publicity stunt to get some attention, to get a future fight with Tyson. Of course, when he was in the tournament, that's about as near to the ring as he wanted to get with Tyson. I think that was Bob Euchre <laughs> sitting next to him, wasn't it? <laughs> You're making a miss real good. You gotta come up punching right away. This is the third round. A lot of people did not think it would go this far. Here we go again, tying this man up. Again, very good, good tactics here. You can't allow Mike Tyson to punch inside. Now we need to see some jabs by Tucker. And some lateral movement, which we see now. And catch up, try to catch Tyson coming in with his head. Ho, ho, time, time, step back. And, uh, Mike, step back, time. And keep those punches up, don't go down there again. Come on, come on. Mills Lane, very take charge as a referee. No nonsense guy. Tucker with another left hook to the head of Mike Tyson. Body, body. Body first. Combination. Oh, get off that neck, Tony. Get, get off that neck. 
to grab him. Get up that neck. Get on with a jab. Combination. Tucker tied his man up and got out of the corner. There was a good right hand again by Tucker. In close, catching Tyson on the way in. He's finished with the left hook, Barry. Let's get a quick punch here. Let's get back. Okay, good punch it. Here we go. What's allowing Tony Tucker to get that hook and that uppercut? In? It, what, what's happening is the lateral Mike, movement that Mike. Tucker has, his jab, he's catching Mike as Mike's born and with the, coming in with his head. The uppercut has been doing a tremendous and very effective job here. And Tony Tucker is doubling up his punches better than I've ever seen him do. There was a good left hand and that staggered Tony Tucker. Again, he's tying this man up. It doesn't seem like much. It doesn't seem effective for Tucker to be tying up. And he's getting warning from Mills Lane. But the fact of the matter is, frustration is what it causes. It creates frustration in the fight. My child, you got two hands are free, Mike. Two hands are free. All right, now you're tied in. Here we go. Come step back. of Tony Tucker, but I'm not sure. You, you don't disagree with us. I don't tactics. disagree at all because Tony's been tying this man up. There was a good right hand by Tucker again. But they're uppercuts, Barry. Do you notice they're uppercuts? Again, we've tying this man up. Frustration should show the face of Mike Tyson. There has to be concern now in Tyson's corner. This is the most competitive fight he has ever been in. On one punch at a time, he makes you miss it, then he pops it on one time. You understand? You gotta use your jab. You gotta box him a little bit. You understand? Get the bounce in your legs. Seven, seven combinations. You gotta combinate. You gotta throw the combination. You're just looking for one shot. You understand me? Here you see Tucker backing up, catching. Tyson on the way in with his long arms. And there, an uppercut. He's fighting a perfect fight. And I'm going to show you my scorecard here in a moment. So far, I have Tucker winning two rounds, Tyson winning one, Tucker ahead by a point. This is, of course, about as unofficial as you can get a scorecard. Our unofficial official judge, Harold Letterman, is not with us tonight. He will be back with us in future fights. We start the fourth round. And in Tyson's corner, they told him to box more. Just get your legs under you. Well, in the corner of uh, Mike Tyson, Kevin would say, we need to see combinations, not look for one punch. And that's where normally Tyson's able to dominate his opponent because he throws a barrage of punches. Not one punch because one punch, normally is not going to do it. Interestingly enough, it is Tony Tucker who really is dictating the tempo of the fight, not Mike Tyson. I've never seen that before. You see the intensity in, in uh, Tony Tucker. There was a big left hand by Tyson, and that was the one big punch. And another one. You see, this is what Tyson wanted. He wanted uh, Tucker to stand there and exchange punch for punch. In this case, normally, Tyson comes out on top. Get him up, get him up, Tucker, come on. All right, Tony, if you go down there again, I'm going to penalize you. I think what the, the Tyson corner is looking for is whether or not Tucker can withstand this type of pressure. Get him up, Mike. Come on. Mills Lane once more come giving on. a warning, the second right, one to Tony Tucker. Come here, come here, come here. And now he's going to talk to him. Now both sides are going downstairs to Mike. You watch those punches. Come on. Tyson needs to use his jab to get in because a lot of times he's lunging in, which makes him very, very vulnerable for a counter punch. Right hand. 
The jab of uh, Tony Tucker is starting to work again. Right, just back. has to be more right. consistent. Step back, okay, here we go. Take it downstairs sometime. He needs to throw a jab downstairs, bring it back up to the head. There's a right hand again by Tyson, but Tucker appears unhurt again. Definitely has his legs back under him after being hurt earlier in this round. Watch out! That voice you're hearing is the voice of Kevin Rooney. What a good shot. And Tyson with another left hand. 25 seconds left, round four. Very but competitive fight so far. Tyson Barry is just trying to wear his man down. He's just trying to slow that movement down. That movement seems to be affecting Mike's punches because he's not able to get his punches in there. But every time that Tucker stands still, you notice a big left hook land from Mike Tyson. Tyson has settled down in that round going for a long fight now. Now he knows he just has to fight him, hit him, and if the knockout comes, it comes. You got a spit bucket? Put your head back, put your head back right there. Open up. Look, two good, real good right hands. Two real good right hands to the body there. He came back with left hook once. You gotta concentrate more on that. You still gotta jab with this guy. What you gotta do is jab with him, you understand me? Don't let him bounce on that. Let him make you jab. Just fly. And them committees have to make you move. Okay. Now to keep that jab on him. Up and, up and down. Tyson yeah. is working closer into, Tyson, into Tucker. There you saw that he followed a right to the body that was an effective Ray, but then he had him there for the left that he did throw right behind him. But Tyson started to double his punch up a little bit more, starting to put his combinations together a lot more than in an earlier round. And in doing so, he should be able to land on the chin of Tony Tucker. Now, something that could become a factor that you never thought would have is the fact that this, only a day ago, was a 15-round fight, and it has now been made a 12-round fight. And originally, you'd have thought that's sort of like making War and Peace from 1,200 pages to 1,000. Moot point, but it's becoming something that could be a factor. Well, the factor is that Tony Tucker has initiated respect. He stood his ground. He rocked Mike Tyson the first round with a beautiful uppercut. So there is mutual respect here. Good hand speed by uh, Tony Tucker. I just don't like when he stands there and exchange punches. Tucker's corner telling him to wait for Tyson to make his move and then do your thing. Tyson got the better of that exchange. Tucker said that everybody that Tyson spot has either run or stood right in front of him. And he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and I'll be firing. And through the first three rounds at any rate, I'm not so sure about the fourth, but the first three rounds, exactly what he did. I noticed that Tony Tucker's left hand is starting to jump. That could be very, very inviting for a counter right hand. A lead off right. There's enough hook. But you know, it's the left hand of Tony Tucker is starting to drop at the side. And that's been his history. Against James Broad, he had that left hand down at his side virtually all night. And even when he threw the jab, he brought it up from the hip. Well, that's how Buster Douglas was able to drop it because he had dropped his left hand. And Douglas countered with the right hand. I'm surprised there's not a lot of head movement from Mike Tyson. He's just walking directly in front of Tony Tucker. And that's why Tony's able to get those punches off. He should be giving him a little more head movement. Left, right, left, right. Be less of a target. All right, let's step back. Step back, Mike. Come on, here we go. by Tyson. That was a right hand, Barry, but you know the problem that Tyson is making, it's one punch, one punch. We have to see more combinations if you want to get uh, Tucker and get him out of there. I think Tucker, on the other hand, is fighting a superb job. He's doing a superb job. There 
was a right hand by Tyson. Left missed, right was right there. The cheer you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, is an old, a Las Vegas cheer. The over-under in this fight was the fifth round, which means that if you bet this fight to go past the fifth round and it was an even bet, you have won the bet. You would have heard a cheer either way. Right hand. Jab right hand to the body, right hand to the head. Spit it out. Take the sip this. Listen, don't get the... Nah, the guy yeah. done slowed down a little bit. But you see, I got to get... Well, listen up in there. The guy done slowed down now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can't wait on him. Yeah. You got to take the knee. Take the initiative. When you hit him, push him off. Don't forget. Push him off and attack him. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying, baby? Yeah. He's better for you now. Uh -huh. Take you control. the side. Do something different. You're coming straight and you let him run around. He's running around. Change it up just a little bit, you understand? More just, more just. Bad intentions. Throw the point with bad intentions. You get the feeling from Tucker's Corner Ray that they think this fight is winnable. Time. Did you see that? Time, time, time. time. Now, that was an interesting scenario. Tucker was trying to get his handlers and seconds out of the ring. The bell had rung. They were so excited about the prospect of possibly winning the fight, they forgot to put his mouthpiece in. You can understand now, Ray, why Michael Spinks didn't want to fight Tony on, Tucker. Tony, quick, 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 quick. Right, so I think Tony Tucker has surprised a lot of people. Right hand by Tyson. Tucker's going to want him not to tie his man up, which I think is a good move because it doesn't allow Tyson to punch. But it actually, instead, they wanted to push Tyson off and go at him, which I think could be a costly mistake. Mike Tyson's perpetual motion is always coming, so you have to break his rhythm, either with a jab or to tie him up and break that rhythm. I haven't seen anybody be able to push him off. And I think he's probably fought stronger oh, fighters. Get back, get the well, pushing a man off doesn't Clean necessarily out. help because you expend an energy by pushing a man off. Right hand by Tyson, back Tucker up. Oh, one step back, Mike. Give me the money. One step Tyson's back, corner, you heard Come Kevin Rooney say bad intentions. That's become kind of a catchphrase between Rooney and Tyson. One step back, clean. Here we go. One step back. One step back. Here we go. Tyson's just walking his man down, trying to catch up with him. The mistake Tyson's oh. making, All right, the girl's he's following Tucker around the ring. Got to break. cut the go. ring off. In doing so, you either move right or either left, depending on part which direction your man is moving. Here, Tucker is moving to his right. And what Mike has to do is move to his left to cut his man off. All right, well, sit back. Come on, come on, sit back. He's punching this. Come on. The fact that Tucker has his height come advantage, on, reach on. advantage, and a on, good go. boxer, and I tell you, he impressed me with his foot move because I didn't expect that much from him. But the fact of the matter is, it's making matters very, very tough for Mike Tyson to get in, to get inside. Tyson looks right now like he's in it for the long haul here. And there was a big right hand. Tucker says, no, no, I'm not hurt. I've always found that to mean I'm hurt. That right hand landed because, again, the habit that Tucker makes is dropping his left hand at his side. And he took another right hand, got cute, and paid the price. I think he's watched my fight before. Yeah, I think he has too. I think his timing is not as good as yours. them legs and using that jab the same way yeah. and that right hand you see you hit him with the right hand you gotta do more of that he's a difficult guy to fight he's moving whenever you get close he grabs i haven't seen the punch out once yet let's take a look at that right hand that mike tyson got in here you see him use the left hand just as a way to get in and then firing the right behind it and this is good fighting now that he's settled down the great fighters don't go out looking for a quick knockout the great fighters go out and fight and when the opportunity for the big punch comes in, they take it like that. 
And here's my scorecard so far. I have Tyson coming on in the last three rounds because Tucker has not been throwing as many punches as he did earlier. That little bit of insolence he had at the start of the fight to establish himself doesn't seem to be there anymore. He has to go on the attack. See, Mike is not able to get set. He's not able to set his punches up to land on Tucker. There he got a warning from uh, Mills Lane for punching while he was breaking. But again, you notice the movement of Tucker's really throwing Tyson off. Not allowing him to get inside and be effective. Tyson's jab in the last three rounds has been effective in allowing him to get inside on Tony Tucker. It's not a jab like Tucker's. Tucker, predominantly a boxer, and Tyson, of course, a banger. But his jab does allow him to work in. All right, one step back. Come on, one step back, Mike. One step back, Tony. Here we go. Come on. And we see Tucker trying to uh, at least get a second win. All right, watch the head. Watch the head, Mike. I'm impressed. But Tucker's really doing a fantastic job. He hasn't been as tense fighting. as he was in the first fight, has he, Ray, he's where he's he was back. just like he was uh, uh, just come out of an ice box, an ice box. How t tense and tentative he was in the, in the fight with Douglas. He appeared to be as loose throughout most of this fight. No, I would be. he's very relaxed. I think what did it was the first round when he rocked Mike Tyson. He said, hey, I can punch too. Well, in fact, in that first fight, he got a cramp in his left arm in the first round, a knot actually formed. It was with him the whole fight. And he feels it was just from tenseness. Also, I think in the back of uh, Tucker's head is the fact that the more rounds to go, the more credibility that he has because he wants to prove that he is indeed a great fighter. You know, another thing that I feel we should at least point out here is there was a rumor in Las Vegas boxing circles oh, 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 the last now, couple of days now, that... If you go down there one more time, it's going to cost you a point. Once okay, more warning on, from Mills Lane. On. Third time, he said the next time it's going to cost you a point. But there was a rumor about Tyson, or rather Tucker's right hand, that he had injured his right hand, and that's why he backed off training for the last back, few on, days. That was three back, consecutive back, left hooks thrown by Tony Tucker. You don't see that from a big man. Not in a heavyweight. They don't throw those kind of punches. He's punching Let's Tucker's punching, tying up. Here we go. Again, Tucker trying to get cute and again getting the worst of it, still mugging with Tyson, which brings the crowd alive. Well, when you do that, and I know from experience because I invented it, you got to be very careful because you always, you're so susceptible, you're so vulnerable for a counterpunch. Ray, we have to give Muhammad Ali a little credit for that tactic. <laughs> I don't think so, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Great. I think that's a sign of frustration that somehow he has been unable to get back what he had in the first three rounds of the fight. The winning the round's pretty easy, but you can win them easy if you use your jab a little bit more. And you gotta listen, you gotta concentrate on getting inside and punching punch out. Punch punch out. You let him pull. You let him pull. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't even think that way. Give me that. Spit it out. Fly a little bit. Now there you see, he's pointing at him, he's winding up, and, and he's going to get hit by Tyson's jab. <laughs> Talk about deflating somebody's balloon. That seventh round with Tony Tucker being animated on his antics, the key to that is the fact from a psychological standpoint, with the fighters intimidating this Hagler. I mean, I'm sorry, Hagler's on my mind now. But Tyson, it really affects a fighter, especially when right, the champion can't get his punches off. It worked for me. And I'm sure Tucker thinks it's gonna work for him. Well, it is a fact. Tony Tucker has watched the tape of the Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight on numerous occasions. His father has kind of used that as a tool to get his charge going. Unfortunately, it was only half 
half works. But if you, if you analyze it though, Burr, actually he's doing what I did to Hackley. I mean, he's punching a little bit, he ties man on, up, and get back on his bicycle. Yeah, but you did that and made the punch count, and he did that and got hit. Well, the key is doing what you have to do and getting away from him, not, not being stationary. Okay, I like that in, in, in uh, Mike Tyson because he's throwing combinations again. But whenever he throws, he looks for one shot. He's talking for a long, long night. In the middle of the last round, we talked about the rumor of Tony Tucker's right hand, and I've been watching him since that time. I've not seen him throw the right hand in anger since the middle of the last round. I hadn't noticed before that, but let's see when he does throw that right hand or if he throws the right hand. Well, in a fight of this intensity, this magnitude, when you're fighting, you really don't feel it because those drill is blowing, and you don't feel the pain. He did throw a right uppercut there, which missed. I want to step back. On the point, what point you want to step Talk back? Talk once again, tying up Mike, Mike Tyson. Not allow him to punch. Time, 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 give me time. Tape on the glove of Mike Tyson, they'll cut it off. Momentary timeout. That can make the world of a difference. Those few seconds, those few seconds of getting a brief can make the world of a difference. Cut it? Yeah. All right, cut it. It doesn't seem like much, but right here, Tucker's being uh, cooled off by his father with the ice pack on his neck. This is the eighth round. We're scheduled for 12. Mike Tyson seems to have gained control of the fight. That right hand seems to have hurt Tucker. His knee seemed to buckle just a full second. Right hand up on the top of the head. When guys are in tremendous shape, it's very tough to see what, you know, to, to tell whether or not they're hurt or not. That was a right hand by Tucker, so. All right, one step back. Come on, and let him go, Tony. Let him go, Mike. One step back. Here you go, time. Time. Trying to get a little mean. Trying to get a little mean. Take that mouth, please. Take a deep breath. Lean back, take a little deep breath. Deep breath, deep breath, let it out slow. Take it on, one more. Trying to get a little meaner in here now. Open up. Just off the rope. We're good. Spit that out. Spit that out. Spit that right out. Okay, we'll open up again. There we go. Stamp your foot. Raise your hand. Keep him tied up in the knots all the time. I said, box like you're doing. You're thinking you're looking like a champ. You're looking great. Frustrating. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hope he's hoping they can hit sneak punch with one good shot and hurt you. Now, you got to move your head a little bit more. You're not moving enough. Move your head, come in, get in there, punch out. You're not punching out at all. You put your mic around. You got to punch out. You got to think about that. Yeah, you know me, it's time to go. Wow. But two, three punches got The question for an athlete like Mike Tyson isn't whether he's going to win, but how he wins. It's like a Sebastian Coe, not whether he's going to win the mile race, but what his time is. So what we're going to watch from now on is really, can he break down Tucker? Can he get him hurt? Can he stop him? Can he end in style? Kevin oh, Rooney go, in uh, Tyson, Tyson's corner said, to move your head a little bit more, you need to see more head movement. That graphic a minute ago saying 15 rounds, as we mentioned, we are, of course, as of yesterday, on, going 12, go. not 15. You can hear Kevin Rooney yelling in the background, get on him, he said. I wanted Tyson to move his head. That's something, Ray, you pointed out about five rounds ago. Yes, you have to move that head in order to get inside and not be so stationary because what, what's happening as he bo as Tyson bores in the uppercut, he's very susceptible to the uppercut. There's a right hand by Tucker that backed Tyson off. Get him up, both of you. Come on. Body shot by Mike Tyson. There was a big left hand, but again, 
Tucker shakes his head, I'm okay. A lot of times, my left hook of Tyson's landed because that's the direction that Tony Tucker is moving. It takes away the power of it. it takes right, off the leverage. Back. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Get back. Here we go. Come on, let him go. Let him go. And box him. Punch him. Punch him. What Tuck can be doing as he's moving to his right or left, what you do, you stop and then you then you uh, throw your punches. Then get back on your bicycle. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Over here. Over here. Come on. I don't want to have to pin line. Let's get punching some, okay? Come on. Come on, here, come on. Lane saying, I don't want to have to penalize you. Let's do some punching. Tyson getting off quicker with his jab now. It's a good, short, strong, fast left jab of Mike Tyson. All right, watch that. Mike, Mike, come on. Watch the head. Come on, come on, come on. Now it appears the instinct for self-preservation has kicked in with Tucker. More interested in defending himself than in attacking his opponent. Open up. And all you gotta do is throw your jab a little bit more. Where's the punch? I haven't seen a five, six all night. Spit that out here. Here we go. Let me get in here, Mike. He's working on the glove play. Okay, here comes the unofficial judge. That's me. I did score the eighth round even. I have Tyson ahead, 88, 84. That means by four rounds. And unless Tucker can put some real hurt on him, he has to knock him down or stop him. On my card. You pretty much agree with that judgment of Larry Merchant, right? I think it's a little closer than that. But uh, these last uh, few rounds here are very, very important. It, again, we talk about judges' criteria, how he's scoring the fight, whether or not he's scoring the most effective punches or the percentage of punches that are landed. Well, if, in fact, ring generalship is a key factor in judging a fight, I really do believe that since about the fifth round, Mike Tyson has been in charge of the fight. He has been the aggressive. Mike, Mike has not been able to land the kind of punches we've seen in the past. And the reason for that is because of the way that Tony Tucker is approaching it has approached his fight. All right. Let him, okay, let him go. One step back, please. boy. Here we go. Now Mike Tyson will get his right, drawers lifted rather than his hand. Tony Tucker's right hand now is dropping, and that is asking for Mike Tyson's left hook. Tyson continually putting pressure right, on Tucker watch it, watch now. Come on, come on, watch that back. And get that head up, watch that head. See, come Mike on, can't come get on. his left hook in because he come, he's coming in first with his head. He needs to throw a little short, that short jab, then step. Like that. Throw a jab, then step in. Get close. Now come. There it was. That's what you have to do. That's what he has to do, brother. This jab will get him closer to the taller man, Tucker, and then he can throw his punches. Once again, bro, you see what's happening here. Then he gets in. Now he's starting to cut the ring off. Now he's not following Tucker. Now he's inside again. The jab, once again, is effective. It's as effectively as I've seen Mike Tyson jab. His jab is awesome. He gets it in, but he has to use it more and work his way in. And remember, it's a different kind of jab. It is a jab that is designed to get him inside to be able to throw the left hand, the left hook, that is. Not a jab that you use just to keep a man off of you. Mike 
can't keep running with his chin like that. Not with the hand speed of Tony Tucker. And that height of Tony Tucker. All right, let him go. Let's get back, Mike. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Here we go. I'm almost expecting one to go down because a lot of times both guys are reaching in with their chins first. Tyson was a little short with both that right and the left. If this fight were a conversation, Tucker starts it off with a few feeble words and Tyson finishes off each exchange with an exclamation point, starting to really dominate the action now. I want to see five punch combination. He's throwing one punch at a time, one punch at a time. Now we see that in that round, Mike Tyson threw 22 jabs and landed 16. And earlier when we showed you our punch stat before the fight, showed that he had been throwing roughly 10 jabs and landing half or less of them. So he's picked up using his jab. He's settled down and he's just fighting. He's not winging punches, not getting caught in as many clinches as we've seen him before. You got two rounds to go. You got two rounds to go. You're in good shape. Now get out there and fight this guy for the full three minutes. All right, try to get off first and then you're ready to grab a hold. Ready to go. Mafi, Mafi. Tucker needs to do something dramatic. Will he try? He looked a little bit like a tired fighter, just looking at him in his corner between those rounds. Oh, because he's never fought at this pace. But this is oh, when you reach down, bro. This is, is when you show that you really, back. really want to win. This is when your body aches, your legs cramp, but you got to push it. You got to push it to the limit. And in Tyson's corner, they told him he got two rounds left. Fight for the full three minutes. Your arms ache, you start, they start to drop. You know you have to bring him up because you know somebody can throw a counter right hand or left hook. And again, a timeout. This time it is the tape on the glove of Tony Tucker that comes loose. Again, Tyson has to throw his jab and get close, get inside. To work his way inside. That jab was going to get him closer. Tucker holding a little bit more early here in the 11th round. There's frustration in, in uh, Mike's face. And the reason there's frustration is because of what Tucker's doing. He's tying his man up. Those little antics there sometimes work. You get the, what you do, you reverse the crowd's uh, approval. I mean, he's fighting his fight. He's doing his thing. He doesn't care what people say on the books or write in the books. Well, if nothing else, you got to say, Tony Tucker did fight Mike Tyson, and there's been a lot of Tyson opponents that haven't done that. Good left hook by Mike Tyson. Again, the voice you're hearing in the background is the voice of Kevin Rooney, Mike Tyson's trainer, saying, come on, you heard him. I mean, just check out Tony Tucker. He's a man of confidence. All right, let's get back. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Come on, stay back. Let him go. Let him go. Come on, come on. Don't let him steal it. Hey, go. because they expected on, the inevitable. It didn't happen for him. Tucker's fighting a great fight.
something dramatic here, but it has been a good workmanlike job. An effective victory. It was interesting to hear Kevin Rooney in the corner saying, with these judges, you never know. you got to go out there and win this round big. So Rooney just being a realist. I have to say something, bro. You know when I, when uh, Troy Tucker won the title against Buster Douglas, I felt that he needed more experience to deal with Mike Tyson, that he wasn't strong enough, nor had the experience to deal with Mike Tyson. I say, it'd probably be a blowout. But he said, so what with you so-called experts? I'm going to show you. And this is what he did tonight. Yeah, and he has. Even if he loses the fight, he's probably made more friends than he has in the 34 wins that he's had. Friends and believers. Now, you have to take your head off to the guy. I mean, he's in there with a, a monster in Mike Tyson. Who has fought a good fight tonight? Yes, he has. I mean, Mike Tyson has done the best job he could, he could possibly do against a guy as mobile, hand speed, height, and reach advantage. And a guy who wasn't in there just to survive either. Tony Tucker, as Larry Murch is always fond of saying, he had the big hat, and while maybe he didn't have all the cattle, at least he had a couple of cows. A right hand go, just Tony, barely go. grazed the chin go. of Tony Tucker. Crowd getting a little tired of that. Tucker seems to be fighting the kind of fight that he thinks he's winning. Tucker talked the talk and walked the walk. He fought him. And he was a better fighter than most of us knew that he was. There's an old saying in boxing, you never know how good an unbeaten fighter is. And an unbeaten fighter is hard to beat because he doesn't know that he can be beat. And that's how Tucker fought tonight. Conversation going on between the two. This seems of a friendly nature. Tony Tucker, very religious man. And we await the decision, and, and we have seen some And here's ones. my card, which we will put up in a moment. I have Tyson winning clearly. In terms of rounds, it comes out 8-3-1. and one. The impressive thing to me is that Tyson was really rocked in the first round. He took the punch. He gathered himself. And after a few rounds of uncertainty, 
just went after it as a fight and let it happen. So if you had to capsulize the kind of fight, Larry, that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what would you say? If you had to capsulize, we had a problem with Larry's headset, I should say. If you had to capsulize the kind of fight that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what well, would you say? Uh, Workmanlike, a good solid job against the guy who was there uh, and didn't let him land a lot of big punches. I think uh, for a guy who fought him back, he fought him back in a way that didn't expose himself to a lot of big punches, which everybody else has gotten from Tyson. And Tyson is not a one-punch puncher. He's a cumulative puncher. All right, we'll get the official decision now as we go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Phil Newman scores. 119, 111. Judge Julio Roldan scores 118, 113. And Judge Bill Graham scores 116, 112. For the winner by unanimous decision, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson, not surprisingly, the unanimous decision winner over Tony Tucker. Tony Tucker said when we talked to him the other day, he always referred to himself as the invisible champion. He'd say, I'd have a fight, and a couple of days later, somebody he'd run into would say, are you still fighting? I don't think he's gonna have to answer that question anymore. In a losing effort, as we said, he probably won more fans than he's had in the 34 fights previous. Right now, let's get up to Larry Merchant, who is with Mike Tyson. Larry. Okay, Mike, undisputed heavyweight champion. Are you happy with the way you no, fought not tonight? Not really, because I was trying my best to punch inside, but I guess it wasn't together today, and he was very intimidated, and it was very tough. Was he a better fighter than you thought? It was very hard to tell because he did a great deal of holding. He did very fast punches. It was true. And he really rocked you in the first round. Yes, he did. He was a very hard puncher. How did you gather yourself together after that punch? What did that punch after, mean? After it hit me, I, it, it, it was history. It went away. Did you? Did it in, in any way intimidate you in the sense that give you respect for him, that no, he might hurt you? Not at all. Not at all. It seemed that after around several rounds that that you decided to step, stand down and not try to wing a lot of punches and just fight him and let happen what was going to happen Well, in the I was fight. thinking that he, because he was very intimidated and he was freezing every once in a while and I was thinking I would get him with a good right All hand. Right, we want to take a look at that punch in the first round and I'd like you to describe it and just what happened because... As you can see, I was had a bad mistake like Don Curry did, um, come right up in the middle after I went down instead of going to the side and then he threw a punch and I was careless and it got hit. It seemed that he had came out in the, into this fight with the strategy of trying to come underneath you as you came in. Well, after he did the first time, there was no way he was going to make this, give me the same mistake again. What are your plans now? Everybody wants to know, are you going to fight Michael Spinks? Well, I don't know, really. You have to talk to Jim Jacobs right here. He handles well, all Well, what are your thoughts about fighting Michael Spinks well, yourself, whether it's next time or him, two years from now? I fight whoever my manager wants me to fight, you know, I'm just a fighter. I do, I do what he told me to do. You're not as happy as one would think you would be for being the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, right? Because, you know, as long as you make mistakes, I tell you, you have no means to be happy. I'm a perfectionist. I want to be perfect. And I was trying to use my jab more, and I was just a little confused that he was holding a lot, but I, was, I stopped being frustrated, and I just continued jabbing most of the round. Let's take a look at what happened in the last round when he came out in some desperation and started to throw big punches again. Describe what you see. What was all of this jiving and well, antics? He was, he was a little intimidating. He was trying to make me think that he was fresh and he was ready to go when he was not tired. I wasn't expecting him. But look, as soon as I come in, he grabs me. Mike, congratulations. Unbe undisputed champion, 21 years old. Do you feel now 
that you're the undisputed champion, that, that really is more meaningful than the other championships in terms of history. I knew I would have you the youngest heavyweight champion when I beat Bird. Thank you very much. Okay, Mike, thank you. And back to you, Barry and Ray. Okay, thanks very much, Larry Merchant and Mike Tyson. Ray, I asked Larry Merchant how he would evaluate Mike Tyson's performance. Let me ask you not only how you would evaluate Mike Tyson's performance, but how you would evaluate Tony Tucker's performance. I mean, I think words can not really describe what I feel for Tony Tucker. I think what he displayed tonight was the fact that he was a nonconformist. He did what a lot of us didn't think he could do. And that's why I respect the man so much, because he, he boxed, he clinched, he fought a very strategic, a very tactical, a very intelligent fight. Yeah, the feeling that he tried to borrow a page from the Ray Leonard playbook. When we talked to him just the other day, we talked about the fact that he watched your fight a lot. You talked to him a great deal about what you had to do to win, and it seems like he heeded that advice. You know, and I saw that in the making as the rounds were progress because I was saying the, the key to winning is the frustration to tie your man up, to break his rhythm, and throw your punches, and win that round at the end of each one. Let's take a look then at some of the final numbers from our punch stat statistics. And there they are, Tyson throwing 412 punches. Ironically, it was Tony Tucker who threw 452, but Tyson's punches were more effective. And I think probably the most important thing about this is that Tony Ty or Mike Tyson rather, actually out-jabbed Tony Tucker, particularly so.